Hello everyone! My name is Cassidy Williams and I'm a Principal Developer Experience Engineer at Netlify, and today I'm here to talk to you about distributed persistent rendering for large e-commerce sites, which is a lot of words. I tried to shorten it to DPR for e-com, that wasn't as good either. Um, so I decided I would try to explain this whole talk to you with metaphors. And it might not be the cleanest metaphor, and you might be questioning me about it, but I'm going to try to make this concept seem relatively simple, and we'll see how it goes. So anyway, you're building a Jamstack site. You're building some kind of e-commerce site with the Jamstack methodologies. When it comes to Jamstack sites, um, you pre-build a lot of different pages. And so, again, I mentioned metaphors. I have a box here that says website on it. This is your website. When you're building your website, you might want to add a variety of different pages to it. I have a bunch of Pokemon plushies to illustrate this. So we might be adding all of these different pages to your website and then shipping it off to our users. And there you go. Now, when your website gets really big, adding all of these different Pokemon to this box, adding all the different pages to your website, can start to lead to really, really long build times. It's not going to be me just throwing a few seconds of time into adding these Pokemon to a box. It's going to take quite a bit of time to get all of them in there. And whenever one of these Pokemon changes, for example, let's just say my Mudkip wants to evolve into a Swampert, now we need to take all of these pages out and make a new build by adding all of these Pokemon to the box again because we have this new update. Again, please work with me on this metaphor. That, that, that is typically what happens and it can become pretty cumbersome and, and the build times can get really long. Now, sometimes we might recommend building your websites in a microsite format. And so let's just say I'm gonna take all of these out here and we wanna separate out the pages of our website. And so we might have some pages that rarely change. For example, uh, this Dell Fox right here has already evolved and uh, so has this Blaziken. Um, we could say that these are like our about us pages, our contact us pages, um, d different pages that, that just don't change much. I'm gonna put that into the the box inside the box there. And then we might have some other pages that do change pretty regularly. And so let's just say it's this uh, Mudkip and Litleo, which they haven't evolved yet, so they might be changing quite a bit, teenagers. Anyway, this, this might be a separate site in there. By separating it out, that means let's just say one of these is going to change. We just have to rebuild this small site. And so the different microsites that you have can all lead to this one big website here, but it's, it's a bit more manageable. And this pattern is still pretty great. It, we actually recommend it uh, quite a bit. It, it lowers your um, long builds and, and some customers that we actually have at Netlify have hundreds of microsites. It, it's, it's totally a valid option. But as we started thinking about all the different frameworks and methodologies people used, we started to think, what if instead of breaking up the site, we broke up the build and thus, DPR was formed. Who's that Pokemon? DPR is a framework agnostic architectural approach for incrementally building web applications. That's a lot of big words for saying you build some things early and some things later in any way that you'd like. Now with DPR, you break up your site kind of similarly to how you did with microsites, um, and it's just slightly different, where some pages are pre-built as usual. These two, I'm gonna put them in here, and they're not in a separate box, they're just in the website box. They're, they're pre-built as usual, the critical content, it's deployed like any normal site. The, these are the things that will not change regularly. They're just the things that are very, very critical that, that need to be uh, upfront and, and pre-built every single time. And then some pages are deferred, and that's these two over here. When these non-built pages, these deferred pages, are requested for the first time, let's just say, I say, Litleo, I choose you. Look at that. It's in the website. It, it's uh, built and then cached at the edge so they don't need to be built again. And then, then the same thing happens here with that. And so if someone if someone hasn't queried the, the Mudkip here, they'll still get the website. They'll still get the Litleo page. They just won't get this one. But then when Mudkip is queried, it's added to the website. 
look at that. How's that for a metaphor? Uh -huh. um, this concept isn't particularly new. DPR was inspired by a lot of early techniques, a lot of older concepts, and, and it's really just kind of reusing a lot of concepts that exist already. Um, and we looked at what worked in the past and kind of refined it and merged the best of those into a proposal for the Jamstack. And there's actually a request for comments to, to see that in RFC for, for DPR on GitHub, and I'll make sure to link to that here so that way you can see it. And we do want this architecture to work on any platform, not just on Netlify and with any framework. We want it to work for anyone. And right now we're testing this concept internally and in early access for anyone who tries it with something that we'd like to call on-demand builders. Who's that Pokemon? Your typical serverless function looks like this if you want to render a page where you have some kind of async function named whatever, and then you have some logic to generate content in there. And then if you want to call it an on-demand builder, which again, this is our implementation of uh, DPR at Netlify, you import and wrap your function with just a couple lines of code right here. You can see that builder that we import and then we wrap the function on that last line there. This is still an incredibly early implementation of DPR, and, and we're really just excited to see what people do with it, what comments you might have, and, and what options we might have, because this is a pretty powerful thing. You see how fast a site can be if you only have these two, because you just throw them in the box, you just deploy a few pages, the other pages come in as needed, uh, kind of similar to, to what we already say with the Jamstack, where you pre-build as much as you can, and then data is pulled in as needed. Now we're adding pages are pulled in as needed as well, and then it's cached. It's it's in the website. It's, it's done. Uh, imagine having thousands and thousands of product pages. There's not thousands and thousands of Pokemon, but imagine having thousands and thousands of these on the side, where you do have your critical pages in the site, and you still have fast builds because every single time your product is queried, it's added to the site, people can see it, great, and then you can add another one. With this model, it maintains the atomic and immutable deploys guarantee that come with the Jamstack. And for those who don't remember that, with atomic deploys, it means that the entire build is served to the user in one state, meaning that your URL is something that is Atomic. It, it's something that is is a source of truth. Where if the URL is this, that means the page should look like that. And and with immutable deploys, it means that things don't change the build. It, it means it means that things don't. For example, the Litlio isn't going to necessarily evolve in this website state. If we need to change a page, we're going to eventually need a new build. But if we're just querying the page and Litlio isn't in the box already, that's when it's added. So there are no changes happening in here. It's mutable. Um, and so that's that's a really important clarification to make that might differentiate from other caching strategies that you might see. So that's about it. If you really want to play with DPR or comment on it, once again, you can go to the RFC and, and ha have your, your thoughts heard so that way we can make sure we can get whatever changes or concerns needed. And then also, if you'd like to play around with on-demand builders, you can get early access at this website here so that way you can check it out for yourself and, and play around with it. And I also super highly recommend seeing some of the videos that have been made with uh, Eleventy, for example. Zach Leatherman should be around this event somewhere and uh, he, he has some really awesome videos on 11 and I'll be sure to drop those in the chat as well. But with that, thank you so much for being around. I hope that you have a great rest of your summit, and thanks for having me. See you later. Bye!